If I told you about her, the princess without voice, what would I say? The Shape of Water is directed by Guillermo del Toro and starring Sally Hawkins, Octavia Spencer, Doug Jones, Michael Stuhlbarg, and Richard Jenkins. Before I go any further, I just want to say there will not be any plot spoilers in this review. This film is set in the early 1960s and is centered around the character of Eliza portrayed by Sally Hawkins. She is a janitor or cleaning lady at a government science facility that is run by Michael Shannon. And one day they take in a creature that is seemingly experimented on and tortured. Sally Hawkins ends up developing a very strong relationship with it and decides that she's going to save it. But of course, that situation can get very complicated. This is an astoundingly beautiful and gorgeous movie, really on all levels. Aesthetically, this is one of Guillermo del Toro's most fantastic efforts. If you are familiar with Guillermo del Toro's work, you know that even though his films may kind of fluctuate when it comes to quality or reception from people, one thing that always stays consistent with his films is that they are gorgeous aesthetically. He is someone who loves to use practical effects, and a lot of his budget goes into those practical effects, making them look so darn beautiful, as well as the set design and art design in all of his films are just so beautiful. The effects aren't flashy in any way. They seem to blend into the backgrounds and are just immersive in this world, and they pull you in as a viewer. And the best of all of the effects in the film is that of the creature who is portrayed by Doug Jones. The makeup work on him is astounding. Del Toro's direction, I think, is some of the best he's ever done. There is such a magical feeling to this film. He blends the elements of fantasy and reality so, so well. He also adds in a lot of depth in this film. Having this film set in the 1960s, a time of social change, particularly here in the United States, I don't think is a mistake. It is purposely done to highlight many of the themes in the film, particularly that of the changing of the times, the treatment of people, and the fact that people who have been viewed in society to be different and outcasts now want some inclusion and want to be accepted for who they are. All of those things are in this film. And of course, there is a romance element as well, a almost Beauty and the Beast type quality to this film. He takes elements from, I would say, the 1946 film La Belle and La Bet, done by Jean Cocteau, as well as elements from Creature from the Black Lagoon, maybe some melodrama elements from Douglas Sirk, and meshes them all into this movie. And what we get is something that I think is entirely unique and rather original. But shifting gears to the acting, Sally Hawkins shines brightly, playing a character, Eliza, who doesn't have the ability to talk. She is mute, and all she has to do to communicate with people is using sign language and emoting physically and things like that. And Sally Hawkins does all of that exquisitely, and she is incredibly vulnerable, happy, sad. She runs the gamut of all of the emotional spectrum, and she does it with flying colors. I would say this is the best performance I've seen in any film by any actress in 2017. But what is also really fantastic in this film is Doug Jones as the creature. Someone who only can communicate similar to the Sally Hawkins character uh, via sign language, via emoting with the body and the eyes and things like that. And Doug Jones is amazing at that. What was the biggest surprise of the film for me, what has not been highlighted in a lot of the trailers or promotional stuff, is Richard Jenkins has a character arc and is a character in this film dealing with a lot of stuff as well and a lot of poignant and a lot of relevant things, particularly to the 1960s but also into modern times as well. The film has a lot of crossing when it comes to elements that are pertaining to the 1960s and pertaining to now and all of that is delivered very well on screen. And Michael Shannon is his typically good self. I'm a huge Michael Shannon fan. He's his typical angry, over-the-top, yelling, fierce self in this film, and he is frightening when he goes there. And he tends to go there a lot throughout his career. But if you're good at something, keep doing it because people
people who keep paying to see it, and he is great as the antagonist. Some may view him as a little over the top, but I think he has to be. What he is trying to be as a character is something that is an amalgamation of a lot of emotion that is kind of throughout the times in which the film is depicted in. This idea of uh, the Cold War and America has to be right, then the idea that anything that you believe not to be right is automatically wrong. That is something that is kind of seen in our society today as well. Also, Octavia Spencer is in this film as well. She's her typical great self. Michael Stuhlbarg is another great character actor who's had a really good year in 2017. He's also really good in this film. The acting overall, like I say, is outstanding. Where the film does have a few faults for me is that when it gets uh, closer to the third act, the film becomes rather predictable. On a surface level, Level, you can kind of see where things are going and where things are heading and where they ultimately end up. That is something that I don't think detracts from the film entirely. It may lead to a few plot pacing issues, but the film overall is one of my favorites of the year. So I'm going to give this film a very high score of 4.5 out of 5 stars. It is one of the best films I've seen in 2017. It is a magical, beautiful film. I highly recommend it for anyone, especially those who are fans of Guillermo del Toro. I think it's another great film to add to his filmography. That has been my review of The Shape of Water. If you like this video, please check out the other videos on my channel.